once again, smokeless chimneys are appearing in the Lancashire cotton towns as the mills close down. Idle mills mean idle hands, and the spectre of unemployment again threatens the North. With cut price competition from India and Japan, Lancashire is losing her world markets. Another mill is closed, one of more than 50 that have announced stoppages. And into the pay packets go the notices laying off still more workers. Thousands are now unemployed. Thousands of others are working only short time, for in addition to the cut price competition, Lancashire's greatest single market, Australia, has recently curtailed her imports by 40 million yards of cloth a year. And that means one week's production if all the mills in Lancashire are working full time and at full speed. But the machines and the wheels are stopping and the tools of the trade, the bobbins and the thread are being put away as the unsold cloths pile up in the warehouses. But as the stocks grow, Japanese textiles, masquerading as British because they're exported through Hong Kong, continue to flood into the markets of the empire. One of the biggest British manufacturers of textiles is Mr. Cyril Lord. In his office, he has some of these Japanese goods. This nylon dress costs eight shillings and sixpence. This one, 12 and six. If made in Britain, it would cost three to four pounds. The shirt sells at three shillings and sixpence. Mr. Lord, like all who work in the trade, is deeply concerned about these imports. The livelihood of 350,000 people depends on the Lancashire cotton industry. In order to preserve their livelihood, their jobs and their positions, we must eliminate the imports of these materials now. The government too is deeply concerned. And recently a cotton delegation went to Downing Street to discuss the situation with senior ministers. The delegation was led by Sir Raymond Street. They were told that the situation facing the cotton industry was receiving the earnest and urgent consideration of the government.